again and welcome back to another Wise and Unreal tutorial where today we're going to do something nice and simple. All we're going to do is look at adding 3D audio into an Unreal project via Wise. So we want to create sounds that have some distance attenuation. So the further you move away from the object or the sound, the lower the volume. And we also want some orientation information. So if the player rotates around or near the object, we hear some panning information. So if the object's to our left, we hear the sound to our left, for example. So it should be nice and easy to set up. Okay, so starting in Wise, the first thing we wanna do is import the audio we wanna to attach to it. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click my default work unit under the audio tab in the Project Explorer under the designer window. It's quite a mouthful. <laughs> it's just in case you're not familiar with Wise just yet. I'm gonna right click it. I'm gonna click import audio files. I'm gonna go add files because I'm just gonna be using one. And I'm just gonna look for my fire audio. I think it's here, fire two. And I'm just gonna import that into my project. Nice and easy. Uh, let's then click on the sound effects I've just imported. First thing I wanna do is make sure it loops. Uh, because, well, whilst this audio file, there is a gap at the end where it kind of fades out. So it's obviously not ideal. You'd want it to be a kind of seamless loop. Uh, for the purposes of this, it doesn't really matter. I just want to make sure it loops so, you know, whilst the object is there in the scene, we can hear the fire. Now, before we look at the 3D attenuation stuff, I'm just going to quickly set my sound effect up just so I can get it playing back in Unreal first, and then we'll come back to the distance and the uh, orientation information. So, now that we've got our sound effect object, let's quickly save our default work unit in the Project Explorer by hitting Control S. There we go, now the asterisks have disappeared. And if you're on a Mac, I imagine it's Command S to do the same thing. Then we're gonna to wanna to move over to the events tab and create an event to house that sound effect and then play it. So let's now right click the default work unit under events. Let's click, in fact, it's an easy way to do it. It's just click this little symbol here, up here, labeled event. And then we're just gonna call this fire. Then what we wanna do is choose what sound effects we want this event to play. So go back to the audio tab drag in our sound effects object, and boom, just like that, we're good to go. And we can leave it as the type of play because when this event triggers, we want to play the uh, fire sound effect. And then just like before, let's go to the default work unit we've just edited and hit Control S to save it. Finally, let's go to layouts, sound bank, and now we want to attach this event to the sound bank file, which is gonna be imported into our Unreal project for Unreal to read and be able to go, okay, this is the sound file, this is what we wanted to do, etc. So, grab your event, either from the event tab or from the event viewer, it doesn't matter, and drag it onto a bus, presumably you've already created a bus. I've created one just called Master, and at the moment this is just gonna house all my sounds. If you haven't, just right click the default work unit. Uh, in fact, you can, the easier way to do it is just click new up here to create your own sound bank. Give it a name, you're good to go. Then once you've got a sound bank with the event assigned to it, you can hit generate all and you're good to go. Well, you should also have the platform selected and a language select. Then you hit generate all when you're good to go. Okay, let's then save our wise project and jump into Unreal. So the first thing I want to do, I think, is create an audio kinetic, I think they're called audio kinetic events. And this is basically what's going to represent that event, that fire event we created earlier. Now in this project I've arranged or I've organized my uh, Wise stuff in a folder called Wise Audio. So I'm gonna go Wise Audio, Windows, English US, uh, Events folder, which I created, and I'm gonna create a new audio kinetic event. So right click, and then select Audio Kinetic Event. And we want to give this name, the exact same name we gave the event in Wires, which was Fire with a capital F. You can then test to see if this has the right event by right-clicking it and click Play Event. There we go, we can hear our fire. Now up until now, whenever I've been adding sounds into an Unreal project using Wires, whenever I've created one of these little Audio Kinetic Events, what I've had to do is click on the event itself, double click on it, and then choose a required bank uh, object that you create in Unreal. Uh, and that makes sense because you can create multiple bank files. So you want to say which file contains the event you want to play. However, for some reason, I don't know if it's this project or if I've changed the setting or if it's a bug or something, but if I select my master bank, it doesn't change, it stays none. So I'm not sure why that is, but when testing it earlier, it was still working in the game. So I guess you don't have to do this. I'm not too sure. Uh, I would recommend you go through this process anyway. Uh, 
if you don't need to go through this process and you've got it working yourself without it, let me know because I'm really interested to see if this is a bug or not. Uh, but if you do need to, then what you want to do is create an, a bus, basically. basically. Similarly to what we've done here, created an audio kinetic event. We want to create an audio kinetic, so, sorry, not bus, a bank uh, that represents the bank file we created in Wise. So if I go back, my bank file is called master, so I want to create one in Unreal called master. So I'm going to go back to my Windows folder, English US. This time I'm going to select my banks folder. Again, I created these folders. You don't have to. It's up to you. And you can see I've created one called master. So to create one, you right click, go audio kinetic and go audio kinetic bank and then just give it the exact same name as the bank. So whether you've assigned your event to a bank or not, either way, what you'll then want to do is come up to where it says build up here, select the little down arrow, the little drop down menu and click generate sound banks and then select the bank you've created and the platform you're creating your game or your project for and hit generate. And this is just gonna update the changes we made in Wise. And you should hear that little beep, which means the updates are done and they're successful. I'm also just gonna quickly hit Control S while my event is selected just to save it. There we go, all good. Okay, so now we've got our event imported in from Wise. It's now time to attach it to this fire object. So what I'm going to do is find it in my scene, which is here, P underscore fire. Then I'm gonna click the blueprint slash add script button. And we're just gonna create a new blueprint. Now I'm gonna be a bit lazy. I'm just gonna stick it in the content folder, which is like the main folder for all the assets of this project. Click create blueprint and that will open it up for us. And we're gonna to want to go to the event graph page so we can start telling our event to play. So as you can see, we've got two nodes here or two event nodes to work from. We've got the event begin play node and the event tick node. So these do two different things. Event begin play will activate other nodes or tell other nodes to do stuff uh, as soon as the game runs or rather on the first frame of the game that this object kind of exists in this scene. So as soon as I hit play, this node is gonna tell whatever we attach to it to do stuff, for example, play our audio. Whereas this one will tell other nodes to do stuff every frame and we don't wanna play our sound every frame because that's gonna sound really messy. So we're not gonna use that, we're gonna use event begin play. So on the little white empty arrow thing here that's labeled execute, click and drag a line off of that. And we're going to want to search for a node called post event. And this is an audio kinetic uh, node. We're gonna use this to play our fire event. So under AK event, select assets and find the event you just created, so fire. Now for this to work, we need to give it a reference to an object in our scene that we want to play this sound from. And this is just the object that we want to play ours from is the same object that we're kind of editing, this one itself. So what we're gonna do uh, at the little actor pin here is we're gonna drag a line off of that and we're gonna type self and we wanna select this, get reference to self. And this is basically just gonna tell uh, our post event node to play our fire event at the location of the fire object itself, wherever it, it is in the world. Now by default, a lot of events in WISE have some occlusion settings already added to them. Now occlusion is something I don't wanna talk about in this video, but I do wanna talk about at some point in its own video. So for now, I'm just gonna kind of disable it or turn off the occlusion. And the way to do that is after we've told the event to play, we, we then want to change the occlusion settings for this event. So what we're gonna wanna do is again, drag a line off of the execute pin and type in occlusion. Oh, whoops, I spell it right, occlusion. And it's this node here we want, set occlusion ref refresh interval. We wanna make sure that the refresh interval is set to zero. And then again, under actor, we wanna reference the fire object itself that this uh, blueprint is editing. The last thing I wanna do is say that if this fire object, for whatever reason, is removed from the scene or destroyed maybe by the player, uh, we want to tell the fire sound to stop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to find a new event node called, well actually I can't remember what it's called, <laughs> let's look for it, uh, event end play. Now event end play will activate other nodes or tell other nodes to do stuff when the actor or you know the fire object in this case uh, is removed from the level or destroyed. 
So again, dragging a line off of the execute pin, we now want to search for, I believe, stop, not stop all, we want to go stop actor. Now stop actor is another wise node, and what this is gonna do is it's gonna tell all the audio events that are playing at the location of this actor, the fire object, uh, to stop. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is again, reference the actor itself, the fire. So let's drag it over to the self node. And with that, we are good to go. In fact, we can test it quickly. Let's hit compile, let's save our blueprint, and let's quickly hit play to see if we hear the fire. Brilliant, we do. Right, what I'm gonna do is quickly close the blueprint editor, jump into my scene. And as you can hear, we can hear the fire which is good, however, there's no, there's no distance information, there's no orientation, I can turn around. And we're not getting any panning, I can move away. And the volume's not dropping, so that's something we need to fix. So to do that, we're gonna go back into Wise. We're gonna go back to uh, the designer window, which is layouts, which is just pressing F5 on the keyboard, which is what I've done there. We go back to audio, back to our fire to sound effects object, back to where we began basically. Uh, and we want to double click on it to open up the sound property editor. Now this is the general settings tab. We wanna look at the positioning tab. The first thing we wanna do is we wanna change the 3D spatialization setting. And this is basically gonna allow us to set some kind of panning information. So instead of having it set to none, which is the default, I'm gonna set it to position and orientation. So this will basically pan the sound for us depending on the location of both the object playing the sound and the listener, as well as their orientation, their kind of rotation, whether or not they're facing each other. Next, in order to drop the volume, the further away the player moves from the fire, we want to edit the attenuation kind of section. What we're gonna to wanna to do is click this little arrow here and select default custom and then we're gonna to want to edit this attenuation setting. What default custom does is it allows you to kind of set some distance attenuation and other kind of attenuation stuff for this object specifically. You can create what's called, I believe they're called share sets in WISE, which is where you can kind of create some settings that you can attach to multiple different sound objects if you wanted them to have the same kind of behavior or the same settings. But for this, we wanna just create its own specific settings. So we're gonna now click edit. Uh, and it's time to kind of set our distance attenuation. Okay, so here we've got a graph that lets us adjust our volume based on the distance that the player is from the object emitting the sound. Uh, so when we're, the player is at zero distance from the object, standing on top of it basically, we're gonna get the sound at full volume. But once they move past 100 distance, whatever that is, you know, in your project measurement wise, then we're not gonna hear the sound anymore. Now I did a bit of testing for mine and I found about well, I could even edit this further, but I found about 3,000 uh, for like the max distance drop off was kind of worked well-ish. So I'm just gonna set mine to 3,000 and leave it at that. What I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna come down to the properties section or the curve section, scroll down and I'm gonna select the spread property. I'm gonna change it from none to custom and I'm also gonna edit the spread. Now at the moment, we're gonna be hearing our sound from a very specific point in the game world. And that's fine when we're far away. We want it to be very clear where the sound's coming from. But once we get quite close to it, in fact, once we're standing pretty much in the fire, we don't want it to sound like it's coming from a single point in space. We want to kind of we want it to sound like it's kind of surrounding us, and you know, the sound is being emitted from a large area rather than a specific point. And that's what editing this spread section can do for us. So when spread is set to a hundred, we basically lose any panning information. It's going to sound like you know the sound is two D, and we're kind of inside it. We're being enveloped by it almost but once spread is set to zero then it's going to sound like it's coming from a specific point again and we're going to get some uh panning information so if i turn i'm going to hear it from my right or from my left so what i'm going to do again this is kind of some testing i did before this video which i found worked quite well uh, i'm going to create another point on this graph and i'm gonna i'm gonna keep it at 100 and i'm going to set the x coordinate to about 100, there we go. So now when I move about 100 distance, units of distance away from the sound, there's gonna be no panning information. It's still gonna sound 2D and like I'm being enve enveloped by it. But then I'm gonna create another little point and I'm gonna drag it down to zero spread. And I'm gonna set that to about 350-ish. Uh, and just to make it a bit more smooth, I'm gonna right click the line and I'm gonna change the line to a log logarithmic one. So it kind of fades out like that. 
And so now, once I move between 100 and 300 uh, units of distance away from the sound, we're going to hear a little bit more panning information the further I move. And then once I exceed 300, it's going to sound like it's coming from a specific point. And again, feel free to tweak these for each sound and whatever project you're using this for. Uh, and with that, I'm happy. So now I'm going to quickly go back, save my default work unit, go back to my sound bank layout, and I'm gonna generate that bank one more time in WISE. Then once I've done that, I'm gonna go back to Unreal. Again, we're gonna generate the bank files in Unreal as well. So let's go here, generate for sound banks. Available banks, master, windows, generate. Wait for the ding. There we go. Now, now let's play the game and let's see how it sounds. So straight away, if you by the way, wear headphones, <laughs> this is easier. Straight away, I'm now hearing the fire coming from my left. And if I turn to my left, there's the fire. So let's move closer to it. So now that I'm standing close to it, there's no panning information. I can rotate my player, but it sounds 2D. We're enveloped by the sound. But the further I move away from it, we get the panning information again. Oh, don't worry, that's it looping again. <laughs> again, it's a bad audio file, but now let's see what happens if I move far away. We should get that distance attenuation. And there we go, now that I've moved away, it's faded out. And if I move closer again, it comes back in. Really cool stuff. So that's that's nice and simple. That's kind of like an essential uh, tool you need for adding audio into a 3D game. Uh, I, luckily, using Wise, it's nice and easy. There was only a little bit of editing to do in the blueprint itself, but that was all that was doing is telling it to play, really, telling it to play and stop. We didn't actually have to do any uh, coding uh, to get the 3D information to work. So that's nice and easy and good to know. Uh, so with that, we're done. I'm hoping this was a nice quick video because a lot of my the last one I did was like nearly an hour long, which I didn't want to do. Uh, but there we go. Uh, let me know if you enjoyed. Um, thanks a lot for watching. If you have any suggestions, anything you want to see um, Wise or Unreal related or FMod and Unity related, uh, feel free to drop a comment in the, down below or just let me know, maybe via Twitter or something. It's up to you. Uh, and yeah, I've been Henry Scott. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.